when Jesse died, I had a lot of anger, um, besides grief, of course. But I had a lot of anger at this country. I felt that it had not, they were not doing for our veterans what they needed to do. And I wanted to help veterans. I wanted to help women like myself to not have to go through what I had gone through. I was married to Jesse Stallings, Jr. He was a Vietnam veteran from 1967 to 1968. In 1981, he took his own life. He had been suffering from what we believe at the time was post-traumatic stress disorder. It had never been diagnosed. There was no help, there was no one for her to call, and so she got mad and she got to work. So MVOC started in a telephone in a hallway at City Hall, and it has grown into you know a six-building facility with two more buildings on the way um, over the past 40 years. I'm here in Gardner, Massachusetts to surprise the Montachusett Veterans Outreach Center, specifically Kathy, who is the founder of the MVOC. The MVOC is a private nonprofit organization dedicated to serving veterans with housing, food, clothing, counseling, and a sense of community. The veterans that come to MVOC come from all over the place. So sometimes they walk in straight out of homelessness. But the large majority of our veterans, over 90%, come in with at least PTSD and associated anxiety and depression to go with it. When we come back, we don't, like in Vietnam, when the guys came back, we were spit on and things were thrown at us. You think a lot of guys took that to heart, huh? Oh yeah, really. Especially when they put their lives on the line. Some people think, okay, you were over there, you were either in Iraq or Afghanistan, and back in my day, you were in Vietnam. Okay, it's all done, it's in the past now. Time to move on, time to move on. It doesn't work that way. I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan. I um, served 22 years in the U.S. Army four years active duty, and then the rest National Guard. I joined the military because um, my dad was in the Air Force and my grandfather was in the Army. We had a situation where we were homeless for three months, and then uh, from there we moved to the MVOC. We became their first family they sponsored. My wife and my son both love it here. In two and a half years, the MVOC has completely changed my life. For the first time in over 10 years, I found myself with my own place to live. I wasn't sharing a house. I wasn't sleeping on somebody's couch. I've been able to put two and a half years of sobriety together living here. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? The MVOC's HQ is about 100 years old. Last year, its free basement food and clothing pantry supported over 750 individual veterans and their families. It's easy to take basic essentials for granted, and this life-saving space could really use a helping hand. Our current pantry is functional, but it's dreary, it's dark, it's kind of depressing. Sorry to the guy, people that are working down there, because they work hard and you know, and they're filling up those boxes. There's nothing that is special about it. We've got fluorescent lights, we have, you know, leaky, leaky doors, we just, we don't have smart thermostats, none of that. Can I help you today? Oh, of course. Thank you, how are you? I can't tell you how many times one of our veterans, and this will probably make me tear up, excuse me, will come over to me and say, thank you. You saved my life. He said, because of you, he said, I'm still here. What have you learned about yourself from all these years of doing this work? I'm strong. It doesn't look like I'm strong right now because I'm crying, but I'm, I'm basically a strong woman and I'm determined and I ha I, when I want to get something done, I'm gonna get it done. Hey, Kathy, how oh are my you? God. A whole crew here from MBOC. Yeah. Kathy, uh, you took a, a devastating personal tragedy and the loss of your husband, and you took that grief and you turned it into a force for good, and we want to help you spread that word. Speechless. <laughs> and I'm not usually speechless. <laughs> Bring it in. Oh. Thank, you, thank you. And one big one for you. The lady who made thank it all you. happen from the thank beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
All right, Jane, this is the food pantry. Okay. And as you can see, obviously there's shelves galore, but it's just, you walk in here, it's, it's not inspiring, no, right? No, it's dingy, it's dark, it yeah. doesn't feel uh, appetizing at all. No. I know that we have the shelving, but if we can make it just a little bit more, like, so that you want to go and, and shop for things versus yes. like, oh, what's in this box here, Yeah, you know? and have lighting to see what's in the box. Right, like right here, it's really dark. It's scary, right. yeah. So at first glance, this food pantry, it's functional. It's great. It's definitely serving a purpose, but I'd like to make it beautiful and functional because the perfect design is form equals function. Hey, there he is. What's up, Kevin? How are we looking? Good. We've got a lot going on so far. Today we are checking in with our general contractor, Kevin, from BB and R Design Build. I'm so excited to see all the progress he and his team have made. Whoa. Night and day. So one of the biggest challenges in this basement is very dark. And so we wanted to get the whole place painted. We brought in Mike from Top Dog. Painting has been a phenomenal contributor. Yeah, I just, I, I can't get past the ceiling. I mean, it just, just by spraying it all white, it just makes it feel so bright and open. And it's like you raised the ceiling a it foot. It really is you know? like we raised the ceiling. The space needed a complete lighting overhaul. Had Eric Bienvenu, he's come in and run all the wiring and installing all the lights for this project. Another thing we had to do to brighten up the pantry is to cover up the dingy dark cement flooring. My friends at Revel Woods provided a warm oak LVP floor and Footprints came in to get it all installed. This place is very special to the community and that's why I want to make sure that every single dollar that comes in here goes directly to the vets. So I have my friend Greg here from National Grid to do an energy evaluation so that we can bring the MVOC into the 21st century. I'm looking up, I'm seeing these uh, fluorescent lights yeah. uh, and you know that's an easy trade out for LED. LED bulbs are so energy efficient, they use about a quarter of the energy that traditional incandescent light bulbs use. Well, this doesn't look like it's a, a smart thermostat, right? So what you want to do is replace this with a smart thermostat and uh, that'll be a big energy saving. Another thing you can do to maximize efficiency is weather stripping. Drafts and leaks from windows and doors is like leaving one of your windows open 24-7. Weather stripping can really help prevent that from happening. So this is the pantry, Greg. I do know that the freezer and the fridge are actually quite the uh, energy suck. So in here we see the, the fan motors. They're typically on 24 hours a day, seven days a week when, when they don't need to be. A good thing to do is to get a refrigerator brush and just clean off the coils on your refrigerator. Big energy savings here. Racking and rolling. Oh, uh, hey, Jane, where do you want this? And I like that we upcycled and saved all of the uh, the racks and that yep. you had them painted this, this color, this yeah, American yeah, flag and blue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Flag blue. So I want the space to be updated, approachable, and have that essence of the Americana vintage. So I'm going to ask my friend Carolyn Granberg to recreate this vintage poster on these two doors, including all of the branches of the military. It's the inspiration for the entire space. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fenway Park. To honor the vets and the staff at the MVOC, I have teamed up with the Boston Red Sox to give them a VIP tour of America's oldest ballpark. I mean, Fenway Park, with its rich history and its proud military connections, this is going to be one of those field trips they will never forget. And hey, who doesn't want to see the Green Monster? Fenway Park kind of holds the pride of being the oldest stadium and they, they kind of keep that going. It's definitely something all of our vets were super excited about and really ready to come to. I think it's very important for us to recognize our veterans and their service and really honor them any way we can. If in some small way the Boston Red Sox and myself have had a part in that this morning, then I'm thrilled about that. I've been following the Red Sox since I was eight years old. And I'm 65, so I, I've seen it all. Great to be around the veterans, the camaraderie. Speaking of veterans, I want to talk a little bit about number nine, Ted Williams. Despite giving five years of his playing career to military service as a fighter pilot in World War II and the Korean War, obviously the best hitter in the game, in my opinion. He was a, a great American, a great veteran. I think it's really important for our veterans to continuously see how much care there is for them and how far it extends. And it's really, really nice to have people recognize that and help make it happen. On behalf of the Boston Red Sox, it's been my pleasure 
to show you our beloved ballpark this morning. I'd like to ask if anyone would be interested in coming to a game next year. This has been a great day. It really has. It means a lot just being here with the fellow veterans. I want to say thank you again. One, two, three. Red Red Sox! Sox! It's design day, and I got a little surprise for Jane. I uh, unfortunately suffered what is called a ruptured distal bicep. And if you Google that, you're gonna find out that that is common for middle-aged men. So I'm gonna need a hand, Jane. And I mean, really, I'm gonna need like a lot of hands because I only got one of my own. So part of this design is the amazing countertops that my friend Killian at KP Countertops is donating. And it's going to be this beautiful quartz, light, great, with the most beautiful veining. And then my friend Jake at Paramount Woodworking, he's donating the most beautiful custom-made desk and custom-made bookcase that are navy blue that coordinate with the rest of the space. I love that you got this poster, you found this poster and then had it reframed. Yeah, I love it. One of the vets had um, had it in here and it was all ripped up and busted like this up. This is an OG, this is an yeah, original. Yeah, this is like from 1935. And this, Claw, I don't know if you use these, yeah. I swear by them. All right, so do we need any tools? Because I have my pink hammer. No tools necessary, that. no tools necessary. Really? There's no need for us to get any tools, Jane. We got the 45 pound claw, it's going to be perfect. It's going to hold the weight. Shwala wala. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And it's got the coolest name, the claw. Hey George, look at these bags I had made up for the shoppers of the food pantry. Isn't it great with the MVOC logo on them? And this is the way to go these days. Instead of having yeah. disposable bags, have the reusable bag. Yeah. And the perfect way to hang them is with our 3M Command extra large 10 pound utility hooks. I love that they're white, they're gonna blend in, they're gonna be functional, we can oh. hang a bunch of these. Hey, Jeff. Hey, George, how are you? Good. We're installing a one gig circuit, Wi-Fi across the entire footprint of the building for all of the patrons that come here to be able to have access to telehealth, VA benefits, schooling processes that they may need. Oh, wow, talk about high speed. You're gonna be able to keep this, uh, this laptop here? Yeah, this is gonna be for your pantry, and uh, just so you know, we're donating 49 other laptops to all the, to the community. 50 laptops? 50 laptops coming your way. That's a game changer. Wow. Which we can do for all those that have served us. It's extremely important for us to be able to provide these services as military veterans are coming out of the service and trying to readapt to everyday life. So being able to provide these services really helps them gain control of their lives to move forward. The pantry is looking fantastic, but this pantry is nothing if we don't have food on the shelves. And since I'm down a wing, I had to bring in the big guns. What's up, Grid for Good? How you What's guys doing? What's up, George? I called in my friends from National Grid. They came in deep, ready to go, ready to help me stock some shelves. National Grid is so excited to be here, to fill your pantry, and we're ready to give you guys a hand. Oh, yeah! I'm going shopping. When George to the rescue called, we knew we had to step in and help so that our veterans could have everything they need. We've got food, cleaning supplies, and personal care products. Hey, Marge, we got uh, Those go over dentures. Here. Dentures over there. No, they're in my mouth. Oh, they're in your mouth. <laughs> George is an awesome gentleman. Peanut butter, peanut butter. He's a nice looking guy, even if he's got a bad arm. <laughs> yep, so being a veteran uh, myself, my father's a veteran, my grandfather, both my grandfathers are veterans. Um, it's really important for me to support those who have served and those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice here in our country. I enlisted just down the street uh, many years ago and, uh, and here I am continuing to serve. So it, it feels like I've come full circle. We are near in the finish line here at the MVOC and everything from National Grid's donation to Kevin and Jane's awesome design aesthetic, it's really coming together. Better than I ever could have imagined. And the surprises keep on coming. In addition to the pantry, we also decided to give the patio a facelift. My friends at Janice at Sea kindly donated some beautiful tables and chairs for all the vets that like to sit out there. I think it looks fantastic. I mean, the place looks so much brighter and just a welcoming space. 
the symbolism, being able to give back a little bit, to show appreciation for what these guys have sacrificed and given for their lives is the, like the best part of this whole thing. What's up, everybody? Welcome oh, back. Oh my God. Oh, wow. We're a family here, and this, this is beautiful. What's up, everybody? Welcome oh, back. Hey. Thank you. Oh, oh, I hug you all, but I only got one wing. You know? I was really excited to just get back into the space, especially because I'm here every day. It has been so difficult to not sneak a peek. Couldn't wait, just couldn't wait. Oh my God, oh wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. 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 Huh? Wow, it looks like a little boutique shop in here. <laughs> oh my God. Woo wee. Overwhelming. It was just like, so, I just remember it before. It was so dark and dreary. For me, it was just like, this is a real place that they can come in and feel that they're at home. Holy oh, it's beautiful. Mackerel. And so bright, too. Oh my God. Oh, well, I asked Jane and Kevin to brighten it up. They said, how bright do you want it? Just the lighting itself, that's the biggest thing. Because the last time I came in here, you couldn't hardly see anything. You really had to adjust your eyes. Well, we got little shopping carts, too. Yeah, we wanted to give you the full oh, experience, you know? Wow. Beautiful dish sets and everything. Oh my god, full shelves. My goodness. It, it has been, honestly, it has been a really big struggle to keep the shelves full. Not just for us, but for every food pantry. The, the cost of those things is unbelievable. This is the first time our shelves have been full in probably about a year. Just the ability for people to have like a full set of something that yeah. isn't pieced together yeah. is actually really nice. Because they deserve nice things. Yeah, they do. 100%. You know, they deserve Nobody nice deserves things. it more than, you, exactly. than our vets. We got, you this, we got you this little laptop here so you can keep track of what's going on. That is just one of 50 laptops that we have donated to the MVOC for you guys. Wow. I got a pile of them upstairs. Comcast has come in and they're taking care of all of your Wi-Fi as well. So not only have they put up new hotspots throughout the entire MVOC, but it's all on us. That, that's huge. That is huge. I mean, to 50, be able to... Oh my goodness, you know, we could never have done that. It's going to make such a difference in the lives of the staff and in our clients. Oh my God, it's like a little cafe. Oh, this is, this is awesome. I was shocked. It's beautiful. We're a family here, and this, this is beautiful. This, I just want you guys to know how much you're appreciated, and I hope you really enjoy it. When I first went in the military, Vietnam was still going on, the war, and we weren't recognized, we weren't appreciated by regular people and for me to see the outpouring of support for the veterans today i find that truly amazing everything that everybody has done it, it still just boggles my mind it's, you're gonna make me cry you're i can't help me... it i'm 40 years and i still cry we feel the love <laughs> george is just a He's a good guy, you know, he's just a good guy and he, I can tell that he really enjoys what he's doing too. It's heartwarming, it's just heartwarming. This is the village, this time it took more hands than usual, all right? You're touched when you come into the MVOC, you feel the energy, you feel the love for the veterans and that's really what it's all about. You know, that's what gives us the freedom to be here, to do what we do, you know, have these flags flying. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of George the Rescue and everyone for what you do and, and opening our eyes to it and allowing us to share your story. Thank you for being here. Woo! Woo! Oh, chills. <laughs> and uh, because we just can't stop, I want to introduce you to my dear friend, Alicia, who has come here on behalf of National Grid to uh, say a little something something. George, thank you so much. Don't bring it, come on, bring it up. So excited to share that we are going to be contributing $10,000 to the MVOC so that you can continue your incredible work. Oh my God. Thank you. Come over here. 
think of when I started this, I had absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, not a cent. Just my big mouth. And they listened. They listened. listened. <laughs> they listened, because <laughs> here we are 40 plus years later. I think it's like a renewed hopefulness. When you see all of this come through, it kind of renews your hope that we can still take care of each other really thoughtfully and, and with respect. And that's what this all kind of shows, I think. One, two, three, FBFC!